neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there, nigh unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting, and clothed, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talitha cumai, which is, being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Chapter 6 and he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? 
And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works to show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced, and pleased Herod, and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry. Yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and outwent them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him, and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five, and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks, by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven, and blessed, and brake the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. 
And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered, into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets, and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. The rock will stand by us. What to do since this episode? The rock of ages. Jesus Christ the Savior is here this morning. Kwa in the keke what to do since one day after that hara bada Yesu yana kusado ke one answer here. Ah, Father in the Lord, the man of God, loaded already with the power of God, with the anointing from on high to break the yoke of the devil. Yoke of sin, yoke of Satan, what of, by the grace of God, yana yeah, hata yote mu. One day yeso ya kakarie iko iblis, iko ajenu, iko chuka. Yana nande safi, ve kakarie. Marvelous, one night safi, yana. Marvelous, safi yana. Marvelous, safi yana. Al ajebe. Grace of salvation, al ajebe na chetu. Healing, deliverance, what you need, what you need, whatever you need. need. The mighty God, the great God of heaven, through his anointed servant, is going to give you your heart desire in Jesus' name. I appreciate everyone here, all the men of God and all the people from various religions, denominations. You are welcome in Jesus' name. I have the honor, the privilege of introducing to you our Father in the Lord, the Lord of God, the preacher of the gospel, our general superintendent in Deeper Christian Life Ministry, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, as he comes up now with the power of God, the minister of the word of God, with the anointing, God of the UCE, God of the UCE, God of the UCE, God of the UCE, the house come, God of the UCE, to bless your soul. Put the hands together for Jesus as it is. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Everybody praise the Lord. Lafia Nansara was to it. I said, praise the Lord. It's a special day. Special time. I pray that the special tea of today will come upon your life in Jesus' name. It's our Sunday worship service. And uh, we're taking your faces to all over the world. It's the last Sunday of the month. But because of that, we're taking this service to the rest of the world. If your faces are brown and ruined and frowning, we'll take that frowning face from Nazarawa to everywhere. If you are actually disturbing the preaching, and you wave your hand and your shout while I'm preaching will take your waving and your shouting to the rest of this it's not our stage I don't know how to do it I don't know how to do it I don't know how to do it if you see patiently and you listen to the word of God and the word of God penetrates your heart and your life and there is a change and transformation we see a quiet church an orderly church a church under the authority of the word of God will take that to the rest of the world too idan kuka zauna suru kuka saurari maganar Allah kuka kasa kunne kuka ji wa'azin da za a yi muku ikklisiya wanda take karkashin ikon na Allah alkaduru haka zamu dauki wannan sako mu kai mu duniya gaba ne all the miracles that will happen here duka al'ajibi ne za su faru a nan gurin you will see za ku gani i will see ni ma zan gani the rest of the world will see duniya gaba ki daya za su gani somebody is getting ready for blessing today wani yana shiri domin a farko a was this to be a money Father, we thank you today. Allah, Al Qadir, we bless your name. 
We know you are mighty God. We you. We know you are mighty God. 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 Pages of the scriptures. And the power of the world. The wonder of the world. And the miracle in the message. Come upon every soul in Jesus' name. Because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And Nasara State says, Amen. And you can sit down. I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm reading from verse 11. By the way, as you look at this chapter of Ezekiel, Ezekiel an evangelist. Ezekiel a bishara. Ezekiel a watchman. Ezekiel a lura. Ezekiel a preacher. Ezekiel me wazi. Ezekiel a prophet. Ezekiel a nebi. Ezekiel a shepherd. Ezekiel makiayi. Ezekiel having the burden of a whole nation at heart. Ezekiel what they can do? Can they even carry on? Ezekiel having the burden of an individual at heart. Let me wonder can they even do any of that? Ezekiel having the burden of your family at heart. Can they even do any of that? As you look at Ezekiel, can they even do any of that? Ezekiel having the burden of an individual at heart. Ezekiel having the burden of an individual at heart. God. As you look at Ezekiel, it shows us the plan of God. As you look at Ezekiel, it shows us the covenant of God. And because he's talking about the plan of God, and the purpose of God, and the power of God, he gives us the promise of God. For you as an individual, individual today and for you as a family today and for those of us who represent the whole state here is Ezekiel the watchman here is Ezekiel the prophet he wants to connect you with your miracle today somebody there he wants to connect you with the power of God today it's coming I said it's coming and it will get your family in Jesus name and you will see in this chapter I'm reading to you how God said I will when heaven says I will there is no one on earth that can stop him when God says I will There is no personality in hell That can stop him It says he will do something in your life I said he will do something in your life I want to say the word to you He will do Ezekiel 36 verse 11 And I will multiply upon you man and beast And they shall increase and bring fruit And I will settle you after your old estate I will do better unto you than at your beginnings I thought somebody there will say Amen and you shall know that I am the Lord God says you do something and he says you will so do it that you will know in your heart he will do something he will do it in your soul that you will know I am the Lord and then he uses one word there he says I will multiply 
multiplication of blessing multiplication of miracles multiplication of joy multiplication of satisfaction multiplication of blessing today is your day I said today is your day in the advance of scripture it speaks about the fruit it says then he will do better things for you today than at your beginning better everybody shouts better better things are coming your way now and now Ezekiel tells us uh, when you read these verses you are surprised because you say I'm looking for this blessing I'm searching for this miracle I'm running after this miracle and now Ezekiel takes us by surprise he's going to talk about the mother of all miracles he's going to talk about the foundation of all miracles he's going to talk about the source of all miracles he's going to talk about the generating said I'm sure you know that what generates electricity it's not going to talk about the generating set of miracles in your life and so he takes us to verse 25 let verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean it says from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you I want you to understand Ezekiel you want healing which if you have healing and it's not water no water to burst no water to clean up no water to wash your mouth no water to drink I am healed and there is no water for a week, for a month, for a year I'm going to sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and from all your idols I will cleanse you it's the origin of miracles it's the foundation of miracles it's the source of miracles it's the heavenly generator of miracles Water. we cannot deal without that verse 26 the new heart will I give you and the new spirit will I also give you and I will put that within you I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh Ezekiel can you explain what you are saying somebody needs a miracle because of something working in the head but there is a bad heart the heart is not sending the blood of life into every part of the body somebody says I have a problem in my finger and I need a miracle there and Ezekiel said yes I understand your heart is not functioning well the heart is the center of your life your heart is gone you are gone but if you don't have a good functioning heart whatever you say you have everything will go down the drain very important water 
very important your heart seven. I seven and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do this here comes now the spirit do you remember when God created man the form was there the physical was there it was like a lump of clay until the almighty God breathes the spirit spirit into man and man became a living soul and Ezekiel reminds you he says yes I know what you think you want but you know you are khakis without the spirit you are just a lump of clay without the spirit and so he says important things number one the water number two the heart number three the spirit and you say I'll do that for you is the mother of all miracles is the origin of all miracles is the generator of all miracles is the fountain of all miracles it is the sea that brings all other miracles in your life I'm speaking to you today on this important subject the promise of an indispensable miracle the promise of an indispensable miracle water the heart the spirit and when you have that every other thing will follow today he will save your soul I'm talking to somebody there I said today he will save your soul and the Lord will take the water of heaven he will wash you somebody there said he will cleanse you somebody there said he will purge you somebody there he will will purify you yes, take that water and it will cleanse your soul yes, and then he will put a new heart in you yes, that thing that is swollen there Thick like stone inside there. The heart of stone. God is going to perform operation upon you today. And he will take out that stony heart. That stubborn heart. That rebellious heart. That dangerous heart. The heart that leads a person into hell. He will take that away from you and he will give you a submissive heart a sanctified heart a holy heart he will put a heart of flesh in you and then the spirit of God the presence of God the power of God will come upon your life today by the time God releases you to go back home this afternoon I see a new man there. I see a new woman there. Because power from on high will come upon your life today in Jesus' name. The promise of an indispensable miracle. We're looking at three things. Number one, the provision of salvation. The provision of salvation. Number two, the purity through sanctification. That's what he said he will do. Said that is the base. He said that is the foundation. He said 
that is the springboard for which you launch into all the miracles in your life. The purity through sanctification. And then number three, the pouring out of the spirit. The pouring out of the spirit. Section one. Those are pillars. One of what I want to you. have those pillars in place. You don't care about the one and you go We can build whatever we want to build. Family, you call what a guinea one of the people will come from on high upon your life. Come as us, so that some maybe some power will come up from on high upon your life. You call that as a man who has us, so I don't forget about. Somebody there I said unforgettable. Not sure what the bottom and two are unforgettable seeing is happening to you today. One Abumara Mantuana Parua de Kuayo. Come back now. But I was looking at verse 25. Some would do by I am not looking at the provision of salvation. I saw and do but Tana did on me. So here old chapter 36 and in verse 25. Is he killed to Latin the Shida? I am not sure in the beer. He says, Then when I speak on clean water upon you, then your son. Then when I speak with clean water upon you, that one then is a watch of timing. This this then I will do that. This comes, then this will come. If you go to the Lord, if you stay far away from Christ, if you stay far away from the Almighty God, if you stay far away from the invitation is giving you, you cannot sprinkle the water on you. He cannot cleanse you. He cannot forgive you. He cannot change your life. But it says, come unto me. All ye that labor and heavy lady, if you come, then after that, will I sprinkle clean water upon you. He says, repent. Let the sinner turn from his way. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him his name. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man is told. If you do that, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways. I will forgive them yes, after you've done that. Then when I speak clean water upon you and you shall be clean. That's why he's calling you. And he wants you to look at your life. All the cleanness in your life. All the filthiness in your life. And you say, Lord, I come. Lord, I turn. Lord, I repent. I will repent sincerely from the best of your He will sprinkle clean water upon you. You shall be clean. Somebody there, you shall be clean. Somebody there said, you shall be clean. Your heart will be clean. Your mind will be clean. Your thoughts will be clean. Your actions will be clean. That's the promise of God. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And then you from the inside. Your very life. And everything around you. He says, Ye shall be clean. And then he tells us another thing. He says, As you come. You have an idol. And he says, if you will present that idol, break that idol, destroy that idol, throw away that idol. There are visible idols of stone of money of gold of silver he says he wants to cleanse you from all your idols and you need to present those idols before the Lord there are invisible idols it's in your heart invisible 
idols. The idol of self. The idol of covetousness. The idol of evil. And he says, if you bring that invisible idol in the presence of the Lord, he says, and I will cleanse you from all your idols. The idol of pride. The idol of rebellion. And you hold that idol as the number one thing in your life. Says, then, if you bring that idol, you surrender that idol and you give that idol unto the Lord he says I will cleanse you from all your filthiness your filthy language your filthy lifestyle your filthy relationship and your filthy action take your idols I will cleanse you look at that verse again verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and this from the ordinary water this one is coming from heaven this is not the ordinary water this one is coming from the throne of God and he says I'm going to sprinkle that water upon you somebody there is a candidate of the sprinkling today I said somebody there is a candidate of the sprinkling today and then he says I cleanse you from all your filthiness. You see three things here. Number one, cleansing with regeneration. Cleansing with regeneration. Regeneration. He wants to remake you, remold you, recreate you. He wants to reform you and refashion you. And that is the regeneration. And it comes with the washing of water by the word. And it comes with the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away. Nothing for the blood of Jesus. What can make me clean and holy again? Nothing for the blood of Jesus. All the precious flow. Coming from the very throne of God. That's why David prayed and said, Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Regeneration. A washing, a cleansing, a purifying, a transformation, cleansing with regeneration. Reading from Titus chapter three. Titus chapter three. Titus And I'm reading here from verse five. Not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy. He saved us. Look at this. By the washing of regeneration. By the washing of regeneration. And renewing of the Holy Ghost. As you come to the Lord. And you confess, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I present myself before you. Lord, I know I am dirty. My sins make me dirty. And I come for washing. And I come for cleansing. The cleansing of the regeneration of the Lord Himself. And then He cleanses you. And He washes you. It will happen today. I said it will happen today. Am I talking to somebody there? I said it will happen today. I'm looking at First John chapter one. First John chapter one. I'm looking at verse seven. But if we walk in the light, uh, no more darkness of occultism. No more darkness of secret sinning. 
come out in the open Lord here I come I am coming for the cleansing I am coming for the washing I am coming for the change of heart I am coming for the change of life the walk in the light I see is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ is son cleanses us from all sin you see what he wants to do number one is the cleansing with regeneration as we are looking what upon you and he shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols will I cleanse you number two is the clothing with righteousness the the with righteousness when a child is born you wash the child you cleanse the child you take all that filthiness away but you don't leave the child like that you close the child and this is what the Lord is talking about you come you present yourself before the Lord he washes you he cleanses you. He forgives your he sin. He changes your life. And he clothes you with righteousness. He clothes you with righteousness. There's a clothing today. And it's for you. I said it's for you. Righteousness will come upon your life. Look at Psalm 132. Zabura the leader to Latin the Psalm 132. Zabura the leader to Latin the Bible. Coming from verse 9. Daga ayan nan tatara. Let thy priest. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. And thy saints shall shout with joy. Your priest clothed with righteousness. And then he says, so shout with joy. Come to verse 9, 8, 16. I will also close her priest with salvation. And I say, shall shout for joy. As you look at those two verses, the two things there, the clothing of salvation and the clothing of righteousness and he wants to do that for you today otherwise you say i'm a christian actually what you know what your meaning is i'm a church goer i'm a christian actually what you mean is i was baptized and as infant and he gave me the name Stephen. I am a Christian. What you mean is, I bear the name Josephine. But, you know, you are naked without salvation. And the devil can see your nakedness without salvation. And the demons can see your nakedness without salvation. I'm a Christian. What you mean is, I belong to this denomination. Even though you belong to this denomination, you are naked. And the Lord said, when you come, I will wash you, I will cleanse you, and I will close you. Look up here. What if you get healed? And then you are walking the streets naked. What if you get a miracle? And the foundation of miracle. The cleansing and the clothing. The man says, Praise the Lord, my headache is gone. Praise the Lord, I was lame, now I can walk. And the man is walking the street naked. The nakedness will destroy the impact and the effect of the miracle. 
that's why the Lord is saying, number one, I'm going to cleanse you. Number two, I'm going to close you. There is the cleansing of regeneration. And there is the clothing with righteousness. And then cleaving to the Redeemer. Cleaving to the Redeemer. Uh, you know, there are some people that say, Yes, I come. And they come and they get healed. But they are not cleaving to Christ, the Redeemer, the Healer, the Deliverer. And because you are detached from the Lord Jesus Christ, you are detached, therefore you can be attached. The sin that keeps a miracle and the sin that keeps a healing and the sin that keeps your redemption is your cleaving attachment to the Redeemer. And when your eyes are opened, you keep on following Christ. You rise up from your limbness. You, you keep on following Christ. And your stomach problem is gone. You keep on following Christ. But you know, you come. And after that, you are detached. After that, you are alone. After that, the devil doesn't see any protection around you. You get healed in the morning. He attacks you in the evening. But if you allow the Lord to do his work today. And say number one, I am cleansed. Number two, I am closed. Number three, I am cleaving unto Christ. The devil will not find an inroad in your life anymore. to Nasrallah was I said the devil will not find he wrote in your life anymore in Jesus name cleansed by the blood of the lamb closed by the righteousness of Christ and cleaving unto the redeemer Acts of the Apostles chapter 11 Acts of the Apostles chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 23. Acts chapter 11, verse 23. Look at this. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and he exhorted them all that with purpose of heart, they will cleave unto the Lord. What decision and determination. With decision and devotion, dedication. With consecration and commitment. You make up your mind. I know the Lord. I'll stay with the Lord. That's the secret of the continuous miracle in your life. It's the secret of power unlimited. Power unceasing. Power unstoppable. I will stay with the Lord. Somebody there, I will stay with the Lord. Somebody that want to hear Nazarawa voice, I will stay with the Lord. He encouraged them. He exhorted them. And he told them what they must do. You must cleave unto the Lord. That's what makes that first pillar of miracle stand firm. The provision of salvation. And he's doing that for you today. I said he's doing that for you today. You make up your mind. You say, yes, I want to have Jesus as my savior. I want to take him as my redeemer. I come to him. I will continue with him. I cleave unto him. I will never leave him. And he will never leave you. 
you have stayed by you stay with you through to the end in jesus name let's come back to ezekiel well we must make the pillars establish the pillars one after the other ezekiel chapter 36 i'm reading now from verse 26 ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 in your heart also will i give you underline that word also also that means and i've done the first one i'm going to do the second one i'm sure you've met a lot of people who talk about being born again salvation salvation i've confessed my sins to christ he has forgiven me he has taken away my sin praise the lord i am saved and i will say what else oh he says i don't know anything else i am saved you see verse 25 is salvation and then in verse 26 it says this is a different distinct subsequent experience of the christian life it says also i'm going to do another thing a new heart also will i give you you who is he talking about you who is he talking about i said you who is he talking about is he talking to you uh-huh why are you not sanctified why are you not made holy what is it every time you hear about holiness mm, i want healing not holiness it says a new heart also will i give unto you it says when i do the first one you cannot stand on one leg i must do the second one a new heart also will i give unto you and then he tells us and he says a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh he's talking about purity through sanctification do you see three things then what i read to you now number one the removal of the natural stony heart the removal of the natural stony heart we don't go to school to learn stubbornness it's natural there is no cause of studies or curriculum for rebellion it is natural we don't go to primary secondary and university to learn to say no to authority it is natural it's the stony heart it's the stubborn heart it is the selfish heart it is the self-centered life and god knows that that will block your way to heaven with that stony heart that you possess it's going to bring stubbornness and it's going to bring self-will you think you're hurting other people but you're closing the door of heaven against yourself the christian life and rebellion they do not go together the Christian life and stubbornness do not go together. The Christian life and the rigidity in evil will not go together. That's why it says, a new heart also will I give you. And I will put a new spirit within you. 
and I will take away the stony heart the removal of the natural stony heart uh, look at Ezekiel chapter 11 Ezekiel chapter 11 I'm reading here from verse 19 Ezekiel 11 verse 19 it says and I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh what a wonderful promise of sanctification what a wonderful promise of inward holiness what a wonderful promise of heart purification it's a spiritual surgery that the lord takes the knife of heaven and he cuts off that stubborn stony heart from your flesh if you are not sanctified you don't have a pure heart you don't have a holy heart on the inside you are rebellious if you die in that condition the man dies in rebellion he dies in stubbornness he stands in rigidity in evil he dies in disobedience no matter what they preach after you are gone nobody can tell us about assurance of heaven who shall ascend to the heel of the lord who will stand in his holy place they that have clean hands that's salvation and a pure heart that's sanctification that's why the lord is saying he wants you to have this source of miracle this foundation of miracle that he will cleanse your heart he will purify your heart he will change your heart he will sanctify you look at verse 20 that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and i will be their god the removal of the stony natural heart acts of the apostles chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 51 acts chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 51 uh, look at what Stephen told the people ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears you do always resist the holy ghost as your fathers did so do ye it's talking about people whose adamic nature has not been dealt with the natural stony heart has not been taken away but the lord is saying for you i said he's saying for you he will do that to you are you still there where are you there will he do it today i said will you allow him today number one is the removal of the natural stony heart Number three is the replacement of the new submissive heart. It takes away something and it brings in something better. The replacement with the new submissive heart. You need that new heart. And it's the only way to get to heaven. If you don't have this new heart, you come to church in vain if you don't have this new heart you call upon the name of the lord in vain if you don't have this new heart salvation cleanses you from the outward sinful life 
sanctification, inner holiness, heart purity, takes away that Adamic nature and gives you a new submissive heart. Psalm 24, I'm reading from verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands. Are your hands clean? No fraud? No bribery? No corruption? No stealing of church money? No stealing of government money? No defiling or touching somebody's daughter? No adultery with somebody's husband, somebody's wife? Are you free from idols? Clean hands. And then he tells us in verse 4, And a pure heart. And a pure heart. He takes away the impure. And then he gives you the pure heart. And in Psalm 51, I'm reading here from verse 10. Psalm 51 verse 10. It tells us the prayer of that great man of God. The prayer you should pray for yourself today. I'm reading from Psalm 51 verse 10. Cleanse and create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. A clean heart. A clean heart. Remove the old one and give me something new. And then he will wash you whiter than snow. It says in verse 12. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Pure heart. It will happen. I said it will happen. Because God is still on the throne. Because the Lord is still in the business of saving souls. And cleansing and sanctifying those who are saved today. Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see the Lord. How does that happen? You come to the Lord. You consecrate yourself afresh to the Lord. You lay everything on the altar without reservation. Lord, I give myself to you. Lord, I give my heart to you. I thank you I am saved. I thank you I'm born again. I thank you I have eternal life. I want something deeper. I want something greater. I want something higher. I want you to sanctify me. And I lay everything on the altar. With that entire consecration comes entire sanctification. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. And I'm reading here from verse 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. And we're reading from verse 9. It says, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Number one there is the removal of the natural stony heart. Number two there is the replacement with the new submissive heart. Number three there is the realization of the new sanctified heart. A real experience. A definite experience. 
a practical experience a present day and present life experience that she circumcises your heart he purifies your heart and you come to that realization Deuteronomy chapter 30 I'm reading from verse 6 Deuteronomy chapter 30 we're looking at verse 6 in verse 6 look at what it says it tells us in verse 6 and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart is the work of the Lord if you reject it you are rejecting the Lord if you resist it you are resisting the Lord if you turn away from sanctification you are turning away from the Lord it says I want to sanctify you I want to purify you I want to cleanse you on the inside and you say all you want is religion I don't want the righteousness of the heart you reject you reject the Lord and he will reject you but he says you come and you commit yourself to the Lord and you consecrate yourself to the Lord and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all that thou mayest live and that's the realization of a new sanctified heart Jeremiah chapter 32 in Jeremiah chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 39. Jeremiah chapter 32, reading from verse 39. It tells us, and I will give you a new heart, one heart. And one way that they may fear me forever. You see what the Lord is saying? He says when he sanctifies you, you honor him, you reference him every time, anytime, anywhere, forever. For people who cannot live a straightforward life, once the pastor turns his back, they are not looking at me, they begin to misbehave. They are not trustworthy. They are not faithful. They are not sanctified. They are religious. They are not purely righteous. But the Lord says, I want to do something. I want to sanctify you. I want to give you one heart. And one way. That they may fear me forever. That for the good of them and not their children after them now it says in verse 40 and i will make an everlasting covenant with them that i will not turn away from them to do them good but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. You see what the Lord has said over there. Number one, he says, I'll remove the stony heart. Number two, I'll replace that with a submissive heart. Number three, I'll make you realize a sanctified heart. The purity through sanctification. There are three pillars of the Christian life. Number one is the salvation. Number two is the sanctification. Number three, the third pillar is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Immersion in the Holy Ghost. Outpouring of the Holy Ghost saturation by the holy ghost 
you shall receive power. After that, the Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. We come back to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 25, the salvation. Verse 26, the sanctification. Verse 27, that's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. The pouring out of the spirit. And the Lord is saying, you must pray for this. You must ask him for this. You must plead for this. You must beseech the throne of grace for this. That will pour the spirit upon your life. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, thus says the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. And I will increase them with men like a flock. It says, I want to save you, but you must ask me. I want to sanctify you, but you must ask me. I want to fill you, baptize you with the Holy Ghost, but you must ask me. You see what the Lord is telling us here? Number one, the fullness of power through the Spirit. The fullness of power through the Spirit. That's what verse 27 is saying. I'll pour my Spirit upon you. I'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. The third personality in the Trinity. He'll saturate your life. He will envelope your life. He will surround your life. He will empower your life. He will energize your life. Fullness of power through the Spirit. Micah chapter 3. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Certainly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Undoubtedly, unmistakably, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. This he wants to do for you. He wants the power of heaven to be resident within you. He wants the power of the Holy Ghost to be inside you. And then you feel strong. You feel courageous. You have great faith in God. And the resident Holy Ghost in you will do the undoable and the similar impossible in your life. Truly, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. In Luke chapter 24 verse 49. And behold, I spent I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Until you be enveloped with power from on high. Until you be saturated with power from on high. The fullness of power through the Spirit. That's what the early church waited on in the upper room. They were waiting for power. Saved. Sanctified. 
baptized in the Holy Ghost. It was a church full of power. Your own time has come. I said your own time has come. Power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Spirit. Saved and sanctified. That power will come upon your life. Am I talking to somebody there today? Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive a power. Who is that one talking about? I said who is this talking about? But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's okay, but that's not our state. Uttermost part of the earth. I said it's talking about Nassau State. Far away from Jerusalem. The power that fell in Jerusalem. And then came to Judea. And then came to Samaria. Praise the Lord at my own time. Praise the Lord in the place where I am. Praise the Lord at your own time. And praise the Lord in the place where you are there. Power. Shout power. It is coming in Jesus' name. The fullness of power through the Spirit. The freedom in preaching by the Spirit. Power comes, then you become a preacher. Because the Great Commission has been given to the whole church. And Jesus told the whole church, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But many Christians today, no power, no courage, no conviction, no passion, no desire. They don't want to see other people saved. Me, me, me all the time. Give me this, give me this, give me this. They don't have any power. They finish one meeting today. And then the following week they want another thing tomorrow. I want this. I want this. I want this. They feel we call the time. Saved. Sanctified. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. The fullness of power through the Spirit. And the freedom in preaching by the Spirit. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were assembled, where they were sitting. And it says, and they appeared unto them, clothing tongues like a of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. And they were all filled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with all the tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then Peter that was a coward a few days before. It was 14, but Peter standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto my words. And he preached the word of freedom. Look at verse 31 and verse 31 of chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles, chapter, 3, chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were gathered together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It's coming upon your life. Somebody that said it's coming upon your life. 
and they spread the 